All right, what are some more useful or interesting operators is the closed operators. Now what we're going to talk about is I have, say, the universe that we're working in, and then I'm going to have a set, and I'm going to have another set. Let's say we call these things, let's call this guy A, and we call this side B. And we'll talk about unary operators and binary operators, but in particular what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the, the elements themselves stay within the universe of discourse. Like what does the power set do? The power set takes a set and generates something completely out of its spectrum. It's a set of sets, right? That's a collection that is useful to me. What's the cross product? It can take sets of chairs, students, and stuff and generate an entirely new set of n-tuples, which is completely different from what I was talking about. My sets originally were chairs and students and books. My new thing is a set of n-tuples, which is not kind of like you know shoving those things all together in an oddball way. Now what we're going to do is say, no, we want closure. If I deal with elements of the universe, they stay in elements of the universe. Right? Nothing weird happens. I don't get a new set of sets. It just stays with the elements that we have. And we'll talk about binary operations and unary operations on this. I did not expect. That was interesting. So, what in. Did it just jump up and on its own? There we go. So, what are some closed operations that we're going to deal with? Um, I suppose before we do that, we have representations of these. We're going to have a new thing to look at. And this new thing is going to be called a membership table. All right, for membership tables, membership tables go along with the sets that we're looking at. And if we have two sets or if we have, for example, one set. So they look a little bit differently. If I would have simply one set, I would have my universe and I would have A. If I would have two sets, I would have my universe and I would have my A and my B. If I would have three sets, I would have my universe, I would have A, I would have B, I would have C. Um, this sort of Venn diagram gets crazy complicated when you have five sets, four sets, five sets, six sets. Because what do you have to do? When we look at this, we have to, the Venn diagram itself represents all possible things that could happen if I'm looking at sets. So it's not that bad here if I would look at this and I could say that, you know what, if I have one set, I have two regions. Right? I have region one, I'm inside of it, region two, I'm outside of it. Right? Now, two sets, on the other hand, has what? I could be inside A, yet outside B. I could be inside A and B at the same time. I could be inside of B, yet outside of A. Or I could be outside of both of them. So it splits it up into four possibilities. On the other hand, what about three sets? I could be inside of A, but out of B and C. I could be in B and A, but outside C. I could be in B, yet outside A and C. I could be inside A and C, yet outside B. I could be inside all three of them. I could be inside of B and C, yet outside A. I could be inside C, that outside B, C. And I could possibly be outside all. That's eight possibilities. And they're all what? Inside, outside stuff. Can you start to see how this might get a little messy? Visually, this kind of looks bad, but I could represent this visually by something that kind of looks like a truth table. A membership table simply tracks, are you in or out of a set? All right, so set A. Set A, I either can be in it or out of it. The 1 does not represent the number 1, and the 0 does not represent the number 0, even though we use the symbols 1 and 0. What does it mean? It means I'm in A, or I am not in A. In other words, what happens? Row 1 is area 1. Row 2 
is area 2. Let's get rid of these symbols for a second. And I'm going to number the symbols according to the membership table. All right. So I have two sets. I could have A, I could have set A, and I could have set B. What can happen? I can be in A or not in A. I could be in B, out of B, in B, out of B. What does that make row one? Right there. What does that make row two? What does that make row three? And what does that make row four? All right, so what if I have three sets, A, B, and C? I could be in, 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 out, 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 out. In, in, out, out, in, in, out, out. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. What does that make row one? Right there in the middle. What does that make row two? That one right there. Where's three? The AC. Where's four? Just the A. Where's row five? The B and C. Where's six? Just the B, seven. Just the C, eight. Every row of a membership table just represents one of the regions of a possibility of being in or out of a set. We are either in or out, so there's eight combinations. Do you start to see that we also have representation of what? You know, like this idea of like going through in subsets, whether you're, you have this element or don't have this element, right? It's either have or don't, in or out. We have the same possibility of it. So we have the exact same. Does this look somewhat like a truth table? Yeah. It shouldn't be that surprising because one of the representations of sets are set builder notation. So it should represent that we ought to have something similar to it. Is this a truth table? No. This is a membership table. What does the number one represent? It's in it. What's the number zero represent? It's out of it, right? We are looking for the region that is outside of that set. Once we form all 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, if we start to look at it, can you start to say that visually Venn diagrams start to fall apart, right? We just can't draw them anymore. It's too complicated. But membership tables, would they be trivial to represent? Yes, you could easily represent this computationally. So that's the idea of membership tables. From that, we can start talking about the operations. First operation, the union. Written in set builder notation, this is all elements E such that an element is in A or that element is in B. Why do we use cup for the symbol for union? Because the set builder notation is using the logical operator what? Or. What does this look like as a Venn diagram? Well, sometimes we could look at it and say, okay, I have my A, I have my B. What is A union B? Well, it's 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Logically, right, what is this OR asking? This OR is asking, is the element in A or is the element in B? What does the 1 represent? It's in it. So if I have an element that's in A or an element that's in B, what do I definitely know? It has to be in the union. What if it's in A, yes, or B, false? Well, what's true or false? It's still true, so it would still evaluate to be true. So that would be a 1, 
that'd be a 1, that would be a 0. Here comes the fun part. That was row 1, that was row 2, that was row 3, that was row 4. Which rows have 1s? The first, the second, and the third. Who should I color? First, second, first, second and third. <laughs> so when we do Venn diagrams, it's color by numbers. If you do, a Venn, if you do the membership table, all you got to figure out is, hey, where am I in? Well, I'm in 1, 2, and 3. Okay, fine. Shade, 1, 2, 3. That's the union. It obviously makes sense, right? I'm in one or the other, so it's in the A alone, the B alone, or their intersection, so we have that. On the other hand, let's say that we had three sets, and I had some really, really complicated operations, which we'll all go through, and you're like, could you draw the Venn diagram? Well, what's the easiest way to do it? Do the membership table, because we know how to do logic. It ends up being that exactly what we do in logic is exactly what we do with memberships. 1 is true, 0 is false. Why? Because guess what? Is it an A? If it's a 1, it's true. <laughs> is it in B? If it's a 1, it's true. If it's not, it's false. Oh, look. It does TFs exactly like we expect. So you can just color by numbers. Life will go pretty quick. All right, next operator. 2. A, bridge, B. These are all elements such that the element is in A and the element must be in B. The bridge is the intersection. So the cup symbol is union. The bridge symbol is intersection. Why do you think we picked the bridge symbol? What does it kind of look like? And do you notice that we tend to use symbols that are similar to things that they're like that in other areas of math? Like the less than or equal to, what does it look like? It kind of looks like less than or equal to, and that's called a subset. All right. What do you think the membership table looks like? In, in, out, out, in, out, in, out, A intersect B. True and true is true, so it's in it. But what's true and false? False, so it's not in it, it's outside. Then false and true, outside, outside. So obviously what's the one region? Right there. A big surprise. Um, third is the difference. A minus B. These are all elements such that the element is A and the element cannot be in B. Given A, take away the Bs. Venn diagram is pretty easy. What's everything in A that's taking away the B elements? That's all of A taking away the B elements. What would that look like as a membership table? All right, I'm in A, that's true. And I'm in B, what would that evaluate to then? If I'm in B, what does that evaluate? False, right? And so this would be true and false, which is false, which would mean that it's outside. What about true and not in B? True. That becomes true, so true and true, so that's a 1. This would be false, which means false, and this is false, which means false. It's row 2, right? It's in A, not B. No big surprise. We also have the exclusive OR. What do you think the exclusive OR would generate? If I wanted to use it, it's not here, it's like in the homework. What do you think the exclusive OR of set, two sets would be? Shade A and B. We would shade A, B, but not the intersection. All right, same idea, right? We would just go through it. It has to be exclusive OR, but that would mean that it has to be in one, but not the other, and not both. Uh, if I would do this, this leads to a next possibility. What would happen on for one element if I took the entire universe and then removed A's elements? That would look like all elements E such that it's in the universe and it is not in A. What's this? True. 
what's true and anything? It's just that thing, because it's the do-nothing, right? It's the identity. So I could just simply drop that out in its entirety. So this would be all elements such that it's not true that the element is in A. Right? That's what it means to be not in A. It's not in A. For this, as a Venn diagram, here's U, here's A, it's everything outside. I had the entire universe and I took away the A. This is called A's complement. So it's a new operator. It's a unary operator. What's the complement? All the other elements. <laughs> what do you got? All the others. Not that. It's our negation, right? It's the negation of A. Now, every one of these is set builder notation. And set builder notation has logical functions on the inside. If it has logical functions on the inside, do you think the laws of logic apply to logical functions? The answer we all say is yes. Huh. Wonder what that means. What would happen if I said I had A intersect B and then I wanted to complement it? And I said, like, we could, sh we could do a membership table, right? And then shade it all out. So let's say we did a membership table. So this is A, B, in it, in it, out, out, in, out, in, out. What would be A intersect B? In, out, 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 right? That's intersection. has to be in both. Notice how it's the same thing as, as normal and. And then what would be the complement of that? <clears throat> Everybody okay with that? And so, what would that Venn diagram look like? So, if this is A and this is B, it's everything. Excluding the intersection, right? Here's where shading kind of gets annoying. All right. What would happen if I did, what is A intersect union B intersect? Let's do the Venn diagram on that. Sorry, membership table on that. So that would be A, B, in, in, out, out, in, out, in, out. A's complement, out, out, in, in. B's complement, out, in, out, in. A's complement, B complement, unioned. Out, out is out. Out in is in, in out, in, 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 in. What does that look like? Same. If they have the same regions, what would you say about them? Same Venn diagram, they would have to be what? Same. So it looks like that A intersect B complement is a complement union B complement by using a membership table. And a membership table allows me just to simply say, who's in it? These regions. Who's in this one? These regions. The same regions have to be same stuff. All right. But let's use set builder notation. What is A intersect B complement? What is the complement? It's all elements such that those elements are what? Not in whoever you complemented. Right? These cannot be A intersect B. But what does it mean to not be in it? It means that they are not in it. Everybody okay with that? It's not true that E is in the intersection. But what's the logic of the intersection? If you're in the intersection, what does that mean? You're in A and you're in B. So by definition, that's really just simply saying it's all E's such that it's not true that the element is in A and the element is in B. This proposition, proposition separated by the word and with a not on the outside. <coughs> 
Would, does logic allow me to do something to that? Allows me to push it through, right, using what? De Morgan's Law. So these are all elements such that E is not in A or E is not in B. If you're not in A, where are you? Outside of A. Who represents visually being outside of A? His complement. If you're not in B, where are you? You're in its complement. What's the or? Union. So what's the complement? Is that? And we did all this work. So all the stuff on the right, what did I use? I used logical laws. But what did I just show? A intersect B's complement is A complement union B complement. What logical properties did I use to show this? Show this. De Morgan's. So what do you think I ought to call this? De Morgan's law of identities. <laughs> so guess what happens? The idempotent laws, the identity laws, the domination laws, De Morgan's laws, associative laws that works in logic, we are going to have equivalent set versions. And we're going to give them the same name. Why? Because I had to use those laws to actually show these things. So we'll just give them the same name. So we have all the set laws. They're called set identities. But they're really laws. So we have things like, um, which page is this on? To know, on page 130. If I would have A intersecting the universe, the universe and A share what elements? A. So what does that mean the intersection U represents? It's a do nothing. So U is the do nothing set of intersection. So it's the identity. If I union nothing, what do I get back out? So the empty set is the union's identity. So these would be the identity laws. On the other hand, what would happen if you intersected nothing? What would you get? Nothing. What would happen if I unioned everything? Everything. Those are the what? Domination, right? What happened to my A? It's gone. You intersect it with nothing, you get nothing. It dominates. Nothing. So the empty set is the intersection's dominator. The universal set is the union's dominator. They're the opposite's identity. And then, et cetera, you can go through every single one of these. You have double complement, associative, distributive. All of these laws have their corresponding pair that goes along with it because it's built on set builder notation. So we need to know all of those laws. So if you ever want to show sets are equal, you can use the identity laws like this. You just go right through them because you use them. This is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this. You can do it by set builder notation, use the logic. Or you could do a membership table. Same regions, they have to be equal. The nice thing about membership tables is not only can you show equality, you get pictures. And you just have to learn color by number.